Okay, guys, so this is experiment 18, that's related to chapter 18, which is about electrochemistry. What we are going to do today is to build an electrolytic cell. Uh, the main objective out of this experiment is to, um, to prove Faraday's law. Now, what is Faraday's law? Uh, so, it's Michael Faraday in, uh, I think, 1832. He discovered that the amount of metal that gets deposited on the cathode from the fact that the reduction is happening on the cathode is proportional to the amount of electricity that's given for an electrolytic cell. In different words, is that you can calculate the amount of metal that's going to get deposited on the cathode or it's going to get lost from the anode okay, uh, from the amount of electricity that you, or amount of power that you give the cell. So, Faraday's law states that one mole, uh, the, the charge of one mole electron is equal to 96,485 coulombs. And as I said before, the number of mole of electrons, which means the amount of power that you give, is proportional to the number of mole or the mass of the metal that you will get deposited. Now, if you take, for example, copper Cu2 plus, plus two electrons, it's going to give you copper solid. Now, which means that if every one mole Cu2 plus, it consumes or it needs two moles electrons to deposit one mole copper solid on the cathode. Okay? You, will see the, you will see the calculation there. Now, how we are going to do this? First of all, we will build two electrolytic cells in parallel. Okay? And for that we have four electrodes. We have one anode and one cathode, and another anode and another cathode. Now we have three electrodes of copper and one of zinc. Now I have, in one electro uh, uh, electrolytic cell, I have one copper anode and one copper cathode. So what I would expect, I would expect to deposit copper on this cathode. That's going to come from this anode. However, here I have a zinc anode and copper cathode. So by the end of my experiment, I expect to see that this cathode is plated or covered by, by zinc. Okay. So since we are going to calculate the mass of metal deposited on the electrode or lost from the other electrode. So you need to know the initial masses of each electrode. So the very first step that you have to do is to weigh the, each electrode and record the mass. Okay? And then later you can do the mass before and after and calculate how much metal uh, was deposited. And that's going to give you the experimental value. And then through calculation you can get the theoretical value and then you can calculate your percent error. So guys, for, for the A meter, you just make sure that you use the corresponding plugs. For the A-meter, you need the A-meter to record values between 0 and 10 ampere. Now the value that we are going to take is 0 0.7. And for the uh, power supply, we will use the DC. Keep your switch open at all times. 
Now once you have set your experiment, what you need to do is to take the copper sulfate solution. So you will need around 80 milliliter from each solution. So you have copper sulfate and you have zinc sulfate. So that's 80 milliliter. So for the copper sulfate solution, you put it in the electrolytic cell that has both electrodes are copper. Okay. So the blue, the blue color is characteristic for the copper two ion. Okay. Cu two plus. So this is the 80 milliliter of. Zinc sulfate solution. So this is how your experimental setup will look like. Now all what you have to do guys, you need to know the exact time that you uh, that you will apply power from the power supply on this electrolytic cell, which is 30 minutes. And also we need to know the current the intensity of the current because the intensity of the current and the time we will be using them to calculate the amount of electricity that, that went through this electrolytic cell so we need this to calculate the number of mole of electrons and from number of mole of electrons and the half equation we will calculate the number of mole of uh, copper Cu2 plus or zinc Zn2 plus reduced and therefore after that we can calculate the amount of metal that was plated on each cathode. We will see that in the post lab uh, discussion. Now for so you will not be able to read anything on your A meter unless you close the switch. Now when you close the switch you can just quickly adjust your A meter to read 0 0.7 so once you have it around 0 0.7 you can start your time okay now even if it's not 0 0.7 exactly, you can still use it, record this data, and use it for your calculation. And after you do that, for 30 minutes, you'll just wait. But while you are waiting, you can watch and you can clearly see actually what's happening on the cathode, the copper cathode. You will see that with time, it's getting the zinc color, which is silver color that's coming that's getting the positive one. Okay guys, so now when you finish your experiment you will have measured the mass A1 before and after for the anode 1, C1, C2, and say this is B1, B2, and D1, D2. The mass difference, it's as simple as, now it's going to be A1 minus A2 for the uh, anode. Now for the cathode, it's going to be C2 minus C1 because it will increase. Now for the copper cathode, it's going to be B2 minus B1. And for the zinc anode, it's going to be D1 minus D2. So this is how you can calculate the difference in the masses of electrodes 
of the electrodes, okay? Of four of them. Now the current, you are measuring your currents right away, but it should be the same for all four. Now assuming that you have it around 0 0.7, so it's not going to change, right? Now for the time, if you wait 30 minutes, this makes it 1800 seconds, and it has to be the same for all four. Now the charge, Q. The charge Q, you can calculate it by multiplying the intensity times the time. Now the intensity you have at 0 0.7 multiplied by the time, which is in seconds, so 1800, that's going to give you 1260 Coulomb. That's the charge. This is how you calculate the charge. So then, you write here, 1260, unless your intensity is different than 0 0.7. Now, once we calculate the charge, you can calculate the number of mole of electrons used. And this is using, Q is equal to number of mole electrons multiplied by F. F is... Faraday's constant, which is equal to 96,485. Therefore, the number of mole electrons is equal to Q divided by F. So, this way, you can calculate the number of mole electrons. So, that's equal to 1260 divided by 96,400. 85, and you will get the number of more electrons. Now, the half reactions happening in, in both electrolytic cells, we have, in the first one we have copper, it's getting reduced on the first copper electrode to give copper solid, which means that every one mole of copper Cu2 plus, it consumes two moles electrons. So the number of mole electrons used here, it reduced how many copper Cu2 plus. Of course, we know that every one mole Cu2 plus produces one mole Cu. So this is going to give me N, I'll leave it N. NCU. And then how to calculate the mass? Mass is equal to N multiplied by the atomic mass of copper is 63.55. And that's going to give you the mass of copper that was deposited on the first electrode, which is this one. Now to calculate the mass of zinc, so this was copper. Now to calculate the mass of zinc deposited on this electrode, it's the same. The half reaction, it's zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. It's going to give me zinc solid. And in a similar way, you can get the number of mole of zinc. Since 1 mole of Zn2 plus uses 2 moles of Z of electrons. And then the number of mole electrons that you found here, it will give you the number of mole of zinc. Now to get the mass of zinc, you just simply multiply the number of moles of zinc multiplied by the atomic mass of, of zinc, which is 65.41, and you can get the mass of zinc that was deposited on the second electrode. So now that you have both values, you can simply calculate the percent error of every deposition, which is equal to absolute value. The experimental value that you found from the difference in the masses minus the theoretical value that you found through calculations divided by the theoretical value all multiplied by 100%. And you will get 
the percent of. Okay?